Hi, how are you? I am Zachary Burr-Abel. This is Miles the Monkey, and we are Monkey Miles. We are bringing reviews, we are bringing tutorials, tips, tricks, the whole works every Tuesday at 2. We've been traveling a ton lately. We've been throwing a lot of the premium cabin reviews, some hotel reviews, some tips and tricks lately. But it was Thanksgiving here in the States. We're back home visiting some family, and we're still bringing you some of that hot content. Anyways, like, subscribe if you like this. Don't forget to use that be off finger when you do it. Bang, 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 bang. I use my own sound effects because I'm not really good at the Final Cut Pro ones. But anyways, um, bringing it to this week, we're doing a little Q&A. So if you don't follow either of us on Instagram, please do it at Zachary Burable, at monkey underscore miles, I think is what it is, underscore I just twisted my words. Anyways, bringing it to you, I screen capped a bunch of these because I said, hey, we're going to do a Q&A this week. What would you like to know? There's a few uh, questions about the Chase Trifecta, Quadfecta, the same thing with Amex. I'm going to do a dedicated entire video on that, so I'm not going to go too deep on that here. But yes, uh, there is a thing called the, uh, the Trifecta, Quadfecta, where basically you create a portfolio of ultimate reward earning chase cards or membership reward earning Amex cards, three or four of them, trifecta versus quadfecta, so that you can optimize every single dollar that you spend so that you're never earning less than say one and a half to two points per dollar. So I can go into that a little bit. It's kind of an in-depth um, review, so I don't really want to do that here. Uh, but yes, you can do it. You just have to make sure that you're watching out for some of the 524 rules on Chase, uh, the number of applications that you can do in 60 days. There's all sorts of things, especially when you get into American Express, how many credit cards you can have versus charge cards that you can have, the once in a lifetime rule, all those different things, which I think would be better to parlay into a separate post. But yes, that's a great question, and yes, I will answer it. Uh, let's just get into these straight off the bat. From James Asquith Travel. I don't know if you know about James, but he was the youngest person ever in the history of the world to go to every single country. He also runs Holiday Swap, which is this cool little travel app. Uh, he says, if you could travel to one place in the world, where would it be? Um... Well, I mean, I think it's always to come home. I love coming home. Uh, but I've never been to Antarctica. I think it's a crazy place to go. So if I could travel to one place, I'm going to do it at some point, probably off the coast of Argentina. Uh, they do these little cruises where you can go and break ice. You can go see the penguins. You can walk on a glacier. That is, like, high on my list. Uh, so, Elizabeth, be prepared because I'm taking you to Antarctica. Probably not for the honeymoon, though. Uh, going on down, uh, let's just see. What's the advantage? This is from Celia. Uh, Celia designs uh, these logos you see here. But she asked, uh, what's the advantage of awards booking over the phone versus doing it online yourself? So typically, you're going to save money doing it online. However, here's the catch. When you do it over the phone versus doing it online, sometimes, for one, they can hold the inventory while you transfer your points. So let's say you go to Virgin Atlantic, which currently has a 30% transfer bonus, uh, and you see the space, <clears throat> excuse me, that you want to book. And say you want to fly on those new cool A350 upper class suites. Uh, they're coming to LA uh, next year, so you actually fly them long haul, which is really cool. And uh, you want to transfer over some American Express or some Chase points over to Virgin. You see the space, and 99 times out of 100, you can just transfer it over. It's instantaneous, and then you can just book it online. You can save any sort of phone booking fees. However, for the slim chance that one in a hundred, one in a thousand time that the points don't transfer instantaneously, there's some kind of hiccup, that agent can hold the space for you. So they can say, okay, I see that the inventory is there. I'm going to hold it, and then you go ahead and transfer the points, and if there's some problem, a lot of times they'll extend a complimentary hold 
for 24, 48, 72 hours. These can be longer on airlines like Singapore Airlines. They've no, been known to, to hold them much longer than that. Uh, Air France is another one that will almost always give you 72 hours because Air France usually transfers instantaneously but doesn't always. So that's one benefit. For any of my award booking clients, I always advocate, I'm, I'm always kind of saying, hey look, if you do this online, go for it. You're going to save you know, 20, 30 bucks usually. However, if you transfer those points, that's a one-way transfer. So you can't move them back from Virgin or Air France, etc., etc., into Chase or Amex. So once you transfer them over, that inventory miraculously disappears in the time that you see it online to when you transfer it over, you're SOL. So that's why I often advocate doing it over the phone. Uh, let's see, going on down. Um, but, 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 how involved is Elizabeth in trip planning or does she happily go along for the ride? Um, nine times out of ten, she loves what I'm putting together. We are always on the trips that she's coming along. Really, anyone who's coming along. If it's my parents, it's, if it's buddies. Um, I'm bouncing things off of them because I have a much higher capacity and threshold for trying to see as many different airline cabins and lounges and I may find it to be far more enjoyable to like connect three times and try out multiple different airlines and their products versus if I'm traveling with somebody else like specifically like my parents like my parents you know they're, they're getting a little bit older so it's like they want to get there as fast as possible they're not quite as keen to say oh yeah Zach like we'll do five connections so I'm primarily the one that's finding the deal and optimizing it, and then once I find something, I run it past the people that I'm with, and I say, is this something that you're interested in? Like, how do you feel about that? And that's kind of how I, I run my award booking business as well. If you come to me and you say, Zach, here's how many Amex, here's how many Chase, here's how many City, Marriott, et cetera, et cetera, Cap One, this is where I wanna go. Oftentimes, like that first choice direct option isn't available. I am more than happy in my own personal travel to pop up to San Francisco to fly to Frankfurt and, and hop on, say, like United's new Polaris, if that availability is there. Not everyone wants to do that. Some people just want to fly on that, like, Lufthansa flight that's direct from L.A. to Frankfurt. So uh, I'm always popping, it, uh, popping the question to people, is this something you'd be interested in? Are you willing to position? How many connections do you want? How important is that lie flat long haul leg to you and how important is the best lie flat long haul leg to you. So everyone has their own uh, preferences. Uh, let's see going on down uh, from Anne Barnt. Have you ever watched Michael Palin's travel series? I haven't. She says, I would love to see you remake them. And I think it's a fantastic, I haven't even seen, but I want to do a travel show. That is my goal. That's what we're pushing for here. I love blogging, I love doing YouTube, but as I think many of you know, my background is as an actor. I love being in front of the camera, I love entertaining, so I would love to host a travel series. I don't know Michael Palin's, I'm going to Google it, check that out, but anything that would take me around the world to sort of uh, highlight and expand people's possibilities of travel, their knowledge base and my knowledge base, I would love to do. I think it is phenomenal. I am continually surprised. I put this in my Instagram post and I really, really do mean it, at how often I'm in places that are in far reaches of the world that I see some part of myself looking back at me. It's just people are so similar around the world. I mean, pretty much people want uh, to play video games, love their families, provide for their families, have iPhones, like that's what they want to do, and probably watch Marvel movies. I don't know, I'm just saying. Um, so Adelaide Marmalade said, do you ever Airbnb? I do, I have. Um, truthfully, Airbnb isn't like my favorite thing because I am a hotel obsessed. I think I've said this in past videos, but it's like a lot of people go to cities and they want to see museums and famous pieces of art and architecture. I do too, like I enjoy that, but I could spend a day just going from iconic hotel to a hotel to a hotel. So being able to stay in those properties, um, I absolutely love it. Uh, so for me, I think there's an enormous amount of value in 
uh, home sharing um, apps like Airbnb or, or as I mentioned James's before uh, holiday swap uh, I, I think there's an immense value but I'm also just a, a, ho a total hotel geek so there you go um, how much of your spare time this is from C pain 99 how much of your spare time is spent managing your travel points uh, this is like every day I spend most of my waking hours looking for deals on my phone on my computer uh, either looking at different threads on say like flyer talk or reddit or reading all of the other travel blogs that are out there I spend a lot of time that isn't something that you necessarily need to do because I just am obsessed with this so I'm super passionate and I just enjoy it I think it's so important, I think, that I follow a guy, Gary V, and he talks about that, like, the chase is what keeps you there. And for me, it's the chase of finding the deal is almost as fun or oftentimes more fun than actually doing it. I mean, look, flying in, like, seriously insane first in business class, so, like, I'm not going to complain about it. I do love it. But finding it for the deal, like, if I even if I had a gajillion dollars, would I want to spend ten or $20,000 on a flight if, if it just meant nothing and I had billions? I think it would still pain me if I knew that I could get it for, like, the super cheap deal. Like, I love the deal. I hate, I hate spending retail on pretty much everything in my life. So that hunt is so important to me so i spend a lot of time doing it because i like it um let's see here bop, bop, bop. the odds from rebecca nine four nine seven 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 the odds of scoring an avios upgrade on cash ticket premium economy to business class i love your blog well thank you very much rebecca uh, i really appreciate that um I think the odds are pretty decent. It, it depends on how far out you're booking and on on what route you're flying. If this, if you're talking on you're flying like the New York to London route, there's tons and tons and tons of upgrade space because there's so many flights throughout the day. Um, personally, I have upgraded business class fares to first class uh, a few different times now. I think successfully, it doesn't always work. I'm flying to London at the end of this month. And it's the return of my cheap, uh, or cheap in quotes, uh, business class fare. I, I talked about those uh, out of Paris, we're round trip out of Paris. So I'm, you know, my, my first leg or my first, uh, my, my first uh, one way on that was from Paris to London, London to LA. That's when we took the Eurostar over to Paris. I did a video on that. And those started like 1300 bucks. So I'm returning back on that flight at the end of this month and I was in business class, I was on the 747 and I upgraded myself into first class for 25,000 avios. So that's actually a fantastic deal. Uh, you only pay the difference between what your flight should cost and what the next cabin of service is. So if you paid cash, uh, it would have cost 75,000 avios had I used points for that one way business class fare. Uh, first class was 100, so the difference is 25,000. Um, I've done that out of Chicago as well. It's an even better deal, I think. Um, but yeah, I think it's decent. You, you need to, I would highly recommend going to Expert Flyer, signing up. I think it's $99 for the year. And you can learn, it's, it's kind of a different language. I use it daily. And you can set alerts. So then they will email you when that award uh, bucket, that inventory becomes available. And then you can pop yourself up. Uh, there's a big difference between BA Business on their old Club World product, not necessarily the new Club Suites. I don't really know that it makes sense to upgrade, upgrade from Club Suites into First Class. Premium Economy to Business is, is a pretty good upgrade. If you're just doing that from JFK or Boston or DC to London, I don't know that it's worth it. To be quite honest, if you've never flown business, I would 100% do it. You get the lounges, everything else. It, it's such a, a quick flight, though. So uh, if you're looking at a more long haul or if you're going elsewhere in the world, I'm always talking about the States because that's where I live. Um, but yeah, I think it's a de there's decent odds of doing it. Just continue to, to monitor the inventory and look at 
uh, how much uh, space is currently available to purchase. So you can just go look at the seat map and see like how many seats are currently available. It's a little difficult because BA charges an egregious amount of money to actually select a seat. So sometimes those seats look as though they're open and they're actually um, they're actually occupied. They just haven't been reserved. So uh, you get a good idea if you just look and see like if, if the entire cabin looks to be incredibly empty, odds are they're going to release that as an award seat and you're going to be able to pop up. Anyways, uh, I hope that you guys enjoyed this. I will do these Q and A's every once in a while. Um, so hit me up on Instagram at Zachary Burr Abel at monkey underscore miles or monkey miles. Please like subscribe. We'll be right back at you next Tuesday at two. Oh my God.